All right guys, welcome back to another episode. As you can may or may not be able to tell, it's uh, nearing sunset here in the Bay Area. And I'm about to drop my crab pots. If you watch my previous video, I'm actually still not done filming that one. This is my first one that I pulled up. Got a few keepers in it and I'm gonna drop it back down. Now, um, notoriously these Danielson crab pots, the square collapsible ones, um, they're good for crabbing from the kayak because they're super portable, but they're notoriously not that great for long soaks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave these overnight, come back tomorrow and see if it helps, you know, see if there's any crab left in there. So anyways, got it fully baited up here. We're gonna drop down right on the spot here. Now when I drop it down, I wanna drop it down relatively slow and controlled. So that way when the pot hits the ocean floor, it lands straight up and down. You don't want it to land at, a, at an angle or on the side of the pot. That would be the worst. So anyways, that one's down there. We'll go drop, pick and drop the other two. All right guys, pot number two. If you watched my last video, you already know how it did, but we'll drop it in, see how it does on the overnight soak. All right, and pound number three, going down. Right, so we're gonna leave these here overnight and we'll come back tomorrow and see if there's any crab left in there. I don't know, to be honest, I've never tried to drop these overnight, these kind of crab pots. I know there's commercial good crab pots that are a lot better for overnight soak, but in my opinion, I think with just a one night, not much swell, I think there's still gonna be some in there. So anyways, we'll catch you guys tomorrow. See you if I'm right or not. All right guys, so we're back. We're back here to get our crab pots. It's been a full, almost a full day. I think I dropped them at like 4 p.m. yesterday and it's now about noon. So about 20 hour soak. Um, and you would think you know, if, you, if you've never done crabbing, you would think, you know, the longer the better. It just gives them more time for those crabs to crawl in there. But actually, with these pots, or so I've heard, and, you know, I've kind of experienced it myself as well. Um, if you leave them out here for too long, what will happen is those crabs will figure out a way to get out. Either one of those cage doors will get propped up, or, I don't know, maybe the current will kind of push one of the doors open and allow them to crawl out. So, that's what we're going to find out today. We're going to see if... This 20 hour soak was worth it. And what is this? Well, this isn't even my pot. Okay, well, this is a lesson right here. So this is why on your pot, on the marker buoy that you know comes up from your pot, you put your go ID number. And that's just an ID number that comes with your fishing license. If you look at the top of your license, you'll have that ID number on there. And so every single buoy that you place out here Every single crab pot needs to have that number on the buoy so you can identify yours compared to others. Because for example, that one that we just passed, the buoy is exactly the same as the buoy that I use. Um, so originally I thought it was mine, but it's not, mine's up here. Um, so marking your spot on the GPS and putting that Go ID number, both will help you, or at least help everyone, identify their own traps. So anyways, we're pulling up on my first one here. And we're gonna see what happened here. What do you guys think? You think there's crab in here? I got a feeling maybe some escaped, but I think there's still gonna be some in here. That's what I think, but we're gonna find out for sure here. All right, buoy number one. Come on, crabs. Okay. Right now we're just pulling up all the slack. So once we get straight up and down with it, that's when we should be able to feel the weight of not only the cage, but hopefully some crabs in there as well. It's got some weight to it. I think there's something in here. Oh, oh, okay. Not a ton, but Definitely, I think two of these are keeper, one maybe too small, but let's take them out and measure them here. Oh, 
Oh, that was close. Okay. Okay, so male crab. And the way to properly measure a crab is you wanna measure, there's two points. One right here and one right here on each end of the top of the shell, which is called the carapace. So you measure not the points themselves, but right inside those points. That gauge or that shell needs to be five and three quarter inches long. And that one, here, let me see if I can show you a little bit better here without getting pinched. Okay, so that one is obviously too small. So five and three quarters is from the tip of that side to this first, or I guess the second notch right here. So if you put one side on one end, one on the other, if it hits, it's a keeper, but this one goes over. So this is a small crab. But these two, let's look at this one here. Here's one. Missing one claw, unfortunately. Prefer if they had all their claws, but that's okay. It's got all his other legs, or at least most of them. So anyways, take the crab, boom, boom. That one hits, so that's a keeper. That is a, it's about five and seven eighths. Minimum size in California, at the time of this video is five and three quarters. So that's keeper, toss him in. And then this one, this is the biggest one we got. This one's definitely a keeper. Nice Dungeness crab there, all the legs. And that's about a six and a half incher. Nice crab there. Really hard shell. Got all the legs, all the claws. This one's gonna have quite a bit of meat in it. So anyways, not great numbers, but that's two keepers. And uh, one good sign actually is that there was still bait left in this cage. So maybe possibly some might have escaped, but some more might have crawled in because there's still bait left in here. So that is a good sign. Hopefully our other ones do a little bit better. All right, on to number two. I talked to a lot of kayakers on the way out here. They said it's been pretty tough out here, which is pretty uncharacteristic of the beginning of crab season. Usually at the beginning of crab season, you know, it's pretty relatively easy to catch your crab. So I don't know if it's maybe because a big swell just came through or I don't know what, but it seems like there's not that much crab out here. So we're really gonna have to work for them here. Luckily, I mean, yesterday they did pretty good. So at least compared to other kayakers. So that's promising. Hopefully we can get a few more here. Oh, okay. This one's feeling heavier. Oh yeah, this one feels heavy. Okay. I'm cautiously optimistic on this one. Ooh. Oh, here we go. The moment of truth. Yep, yeah, there's some crab in there. There's definitely some crab in there. How about that? There's definitely crab in this one. Unfortunately, most of these are rock crab, um, which are still good eating. Don't get me wrong. But if I had to choose one, personally, I like the Dungeness more. So anyways, let's see what the deal is. Wow, this one has a, like a sea anemone. I think. Look at this. Oh, that one almost clawed me. Okay, so we take a look at these two. These are the different, this is the difference between a Dungeness and a rock crab. Dungeness, rock crab. You can see the top there. The rock crabs are a lot more red. These are at least red rock crab. Um, the Dungeness are kind of purplish. I don't know. You can see the difference there. But anyways, this is a female rock crab, so I'm gonna toss this one back. You can keep females as well as males, and I think this is a keeper. Yeah, it's definitely a keeper. You just need these to be four inches, but I'm gonna toss this one back. This one right here, that's a big 
male rock crab. That's uh, a seven incher. I'm gonna keep this one. Um, the reason a lot of people don't like rock crab, myself kind of included, not that I don't like them, I just prefer the Dungeness. But the reason the Dungeness are more preferred is if you can see those legs there, they're not they're not as big comparatively to the Dungeness. Now the claws are huge. There's a lot of meat in the claws and uh, the body has some meat also. But anyways, that's a red rock crab. Not too bad. We'll take it. Another small female rock crab and one more small female rock crab. Now this one, look at this, this is an interesting one. So I think this is a, maybe a yellow rock crab. I'm not 100% sure, but look at how many barnacles there are on this one. All on the top and bottom of the, the shell. And then also it's got, I think there's a sea anemone on top of it as well. I've never seen a crab with a sea anemone on it. Look at that. Interesting. Now technically, let's see. Yeah, technically this is a keeper also, but I'm gonna toss this one back. I don't know, it just seems like when they have all these barnacles on them, they're like weaker and then the meat's not as good. I don't know, maybe it's just a mental thing, but anyways, also has that sea anemone on top, which is pretty interesting. This guy, I can tell he's had an eventful life, or should I say see, this is a female. She's had an eventful life. We'll uh, let it continue. Back she goes. Okay, now we have two Dungeness left. These are nice ones. I think this is gonna be a keeper, let's see. Come on, yes. Six incher. That's a six inch male Dungeness, definitely a keeper. Okay, and then one more. I think this is gonna be keeper also. Yes. That's six and a quarter inches. Boom. That's another nice one. All the claws are missing one leg. That's got both claws and all the other legs. Nice keeper. So two more Dungeness. So now we have four Dungeness and one rock crab keeper and one pot to go. Let's see if we can get some more on the last one. All right, guys, number three. So far, I mean, it seems they're doing okay. Not great. I think some might have escaped. But for 20 hour soak, I still think these pots are fairly effective. So let's see uh, this one. Okay, let's pull them up. Okay, this one feels like it's got some weight to it. Oh man. I don't know if it's me, but it feels heavy. Okay, we got a few in there. Let's see, come on, okay. Yeah, I think that one might have done the best out of all of them. Oh, interesting. The bait cage on this one opened up. Didn't seem to affect it too much though. Still some crab in here. That must have just happened because the bait cage opened up and there's still bait in there. They would have pulled it out pretty quick, I think, if it was open the whole time. Throw that bait away. Yeah, all of them still had some bait in there at least, so. I think that might have helped keep the crab in there. All right, there's another little small female rock crab. This is a decent sized male rock crab and I already kept that one. So I think I'm gonna keep this one as well to go with it. That's a six incher, definitely legal. Pretty close to clawing me. I'm not sure, yellow rock crab or brown rock crab? I think, the, well maybe it's a brown rock crab. I don't know, if you guys know in the comments section, let me know, toss that one back. And on to the Dungeness now. This one I think did the best. 
Let's see, ooh, this one's close. Yep, it's keeper. About five, just over five and three quarters. Nice keeper male. All right, let's see this one. I think this one's gonna make it also. Ooh, it's close. Hold up. Oh, that leg. Oh yeah, keeper. Keeper. Nice one. Got all the legs and claws. Two for that pot. That's a nice one right there. Definitely keeper. Seven and, or sorry, six and a half. And one more. Another nice one. This one is also six and a half. Another nice one. That one's missing a claw, but that's okay. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, oh, eight. Another eight. Eight keeper Dungeness and two keeper rock crab that I kept. A couple more that I tossed back. So another solid day, not stellar numbers, but you know, eight keeper Dungeness is pretty good. Plus the extra couple bonus rock crab. I will definitely take it. And the conclusion for me at least is they definitely do work on the overnight soak. I think some do escape, so there is some truth to that. But I think if you stuff it full of bait and uh, you know don't leave it for more than a day, more than 24 hours, I think you're still gonna catch some crab. So anyways, if you're interested, I'll leave the gear, the cage, the harness, the lead core rope, and the buoy. I'll leave it all linked in the description. You can buy it piece by piece, or they have little sets where you can buy the whole set all in one. Um, and save yourself a little money. So I'll put both in the link. I'll put link to both in the description below if you're interested. Oh, and the bait cage. I think you have to buy the bait cage separately, but anyways, I'll leave it all linked in the description if you guys are interested. Other than that, let me know what you guys think. Did you like this video? It's a little bit of a different video, I'm trying to test different things. Um, if you're interested, I can definitely do more. Leave a comment below what you want me to test next time. Should I test different baits, different cages, different depths i don't know you let me know in the comment section below there's so many different things crabbing is so simple yet there's so many little things you can tweak i think because crabs are so uh for lack of a better word dumb there's a lot of different ways you can catch them so anyways let me know in the comment section below and thank you guys for watching and we'll see you on the next one i don't know if you guys can see that there's a little baby crab there not sure if it's a dungeness but if so Hopefully I catch it again in a couple years when it's a 7-incher.